around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers. And that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Dillon. Hello, Ben. How are you? Had shipment come in from St. Louis? He came in on the morning train, Marshal. I was going to send the boy over to tell you. What, have you seen it yet? I haven't had a chance to open it up. Here it is. Oh, good. Well, let's see how it looks. Huh? All right. And there it is. Prettiest gold watch chain I ever did see. <laughs> oh, Chester like that. Yeah. And look at the gleam on that elk stew. Yeah. Uh, Chester, know you're getting this for him? Oh, no, no. It's by way of a surprise. He thinks he's got a birthday this month sometime. Saturday's about the middle of the month, so I figure it's as good a day as any. Give it. Yeah, morning, Miss Tara. Oh, morning, Ben. Uh, Marshal Dillon. Morning, Tara. Oh, oh, how beautiful. Is it yours, Marshal? Oh, no, no, no. It's for Chester. He's always wanted one. Oh, it's lovely. Uh, ben, mm-hmm. uh, did my hand mirror arrive? Yeah, it came in this morning, Miss Tara. Uh, can I take it now? Well, I don't know why not. It's paid for. Here. Uh, Careful now, Miss Tara. Came all the way from Boston, so don't drop it. Oh, I won't. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, thanks, Ben. Uh, goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Marshal Dillon. Goodbye, Tara. Goodbye. <laughs> That's a mighty pretty girl, Ben. Yes, sir. Yeah. She's blossomed out since I saw her last. Well, what owe you, Ben? Oh, be just about four dollars, Marshal. Four dollars, huh? Yeah. There we are, four dollars. Thank you, Marshal. And uh, give Chester my regards. I'll do that, Ben. Well, morning, Miss Lane. Morning, Marshal. Morning. Morning, Marshal. Hello, John. Oh, hello, Marshal. Good morning, Chester. Well, morning, Mr. Dillon. Uh, put this in the safe for me, will you? Yes, sir. How was the auction yesterday? You know, Mr. Dillon, I never did see so many horses and mules. <laughs> you buy anything? No, sir, Mr. Dillon. But Asa Welton bought that old stud horse off Mr. McGovern. No, is that so? Yeah. You know... I feel sorry for poor old Asa. Why, that stud horse has got a ring bone so bad he can't hardly walk. <laughs> well, Asa isn't very smart when it comes to horses, I'm afraid. No, sir, he ain't. And I purely hate to see him lose good money on a horse like that. Why, he paid $19 for that horse. No? Well, he'll make out if the stud can get him some colts. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir, I guess. That is, if he's got a mare. <laughs> yes, Chester, if he's got a mare. And if he don't, well, sir, I just don't know. My. Chester, this evening I'm going to have supper with Kitty over at Dodge House. Will you stay here? There's no work to do, but uh, you could keep an eye on things, huh? Well, I'd be proud, Mr. Dillon. More coffee, Kitty? Uh, no, thanks, Matt. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, mind if I smoke? Oh, <laughs> those are the longest cigars I ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it bothers Matt, you, I'll have... 
six nights a week at the Texas Trail, and you think I'd mind one cigar? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Matt. What? There's something been troubling me. Oh? What's that? Well, I wanted to have supper here so we could talk. Well, what is it, Kitty? Almost four months ago, you and Chester brought a little girl back into town. Daddy was dead out on the plains. You brought her back because she couldn't stay out there alone. Well, go on. She was real sweet. Young, I guess maybe 17. You're talking about Tara Hantry. Yeah, man. I saw her over at the general store this morning. What about her? Well, she's hanging around the Texas Trail, Matt. I see her there all the time, afternoons, evenings. Oh? Well, why are you telling me this, Kitty? Well, it's no place for a girl. Not a young girl, not a girl like Tara. I don't have any say about how Kate runs the Texas Trail. If they don't want Tara in the place, Kate should keep her out. Well, Kate won't keep her out. Why should she? Tara's attractive. She's good for business. Kitty, when I brought Tara back to Dodge, Lawrence Kells and his wife took her in. They've been treating her like their own daughter. Now, it, it's not my place to interfere well, with Well, maybe them. they don't know, Matt. They're church-going people, Kitty Kells and his wife. They try to do what's right for Tara. I'm sure they do. Matt, people like the Kells don't know the Texas Trail. They don't know the saddle bums, the spoilers, the wild ones that hang out there. Even if they did, they wouldn't see too much wrong with the man Tara's taken up with. Well, who is it? Jack Grace. Jack Grace? Yeah. Tara's keeping company with him? She has been since he came to town a few weeks back. Well, that little fool. Well, don't blame her too much, Matt. He cuts quite a figure. Long hair, buckskin shirt, Texas spurs. She's young, and his stories make for good listening. Yeah. Matt, I, I've talked with Grace, and there's something wrong with him. He's too cold, like he's dead inside. He can charm you with a, a smile, and he talks just fine, almost almost like a gentleman. But there's nothing inside him, Matt. He, he, he's empty, like a shell. All right. What do you want me to do, Kitty? Thank you, Matt. Talk to the Kells. All right. Tomorrow morning. I promise. Good morning, Marshal Dillon. Good morning, Tara. Uh, we are having some lemonade. Uh, won't you join us? Uh, well, uh... I came looking for Mr. Kells. Uh, they're both down at the church, uh, getting ready for the social tomorrow night. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Marshal Dillon, have you met Mr. Grace? Mr. Grace? I know of you, Marshal Dillon. Down around Waco, several of the boys speak of you. No? Uh, uh, what did you want to see the Kells about, Marshal Dillon? Uh, maybe I could help you. I think I should talk to them, Tara. It's a matter of business. About Mr. Kells' business? The buffalo hides? Uh, no, no, no. It's another sort of thing. I, I better come back, Tara. They, they'll be home later. <laughs> well, you, you know how these church socials take planning. It, it may be late. Yeah, well, well, I'll come back then. Sorry you won't join us, Marshal. Thank you anyway, Mr. Grace. I'll walk you to the gate, Marshal. Oh, fine. I'll be seeing you again, Marshal Dillon. Maybe, Mr. Grace. I know why you came here today, Marshal. I know why you wanted to see the Kells. You do, Tara? It's about me and Jack Grace, isn't it? This isn't the time to talk about it, Tara. It's a fine time to talk about it. Now, look, the Tara... The busybodies I... in this town sent you over here. They don't like my keeping company with Jack. Isn't that right? They're not busy, buddies, Tara. They're people who are fond of you. Older than you and know more about Jack Grace than you do. Blue-nosed old gossip. Now, Tara, listen to no, me. No, you I... listen to me. For as long back as I can remember, Pa and me worked that dried-up old homestead. Alone after Ma died. It killed Pa. 
came near to killing me. Look, when I brought you into Dodge, the Kells took you in. They treated you like their own daughter. Mr. Kells is a wealthy man. He's given you everything he can. And I'm grateful to him. He's tried hard to do all the things Paul would have done if the planes hadn't killed him. But he still can't give me the love and excitement and fun Jack Grace can. Oh, Tara, so help me. If you were two years younger, I'd put you across my knee and slap some sense into you. Now, if you hurt the kills because of Jack Grace, or if you get yourself in trouble, I'm going to forget about this. I didn't know better. I'd say it was a lover's spat. I'll be back later, Tara. There isn't much point in that, Marshal Dillon. From what I could hear on the porch, Miss Tara seems to have said what she thinks real plain. I'll be back later, Tara. Will you tell him? I don't know why you bother, Marshal. If the Kells are ones to worry about loose reputations, they might not pay too much attention to you. What are you getting at? A U.S. Marshal who... Sniffs around one of the girls at the Texas Trail isn't in the best of company, and after all, everyone knows a kitty is... Just... Now get up. And if I ever hear you've mentioned kitty again, I'll come after you. Why don't you do that? I will. Good day, Tara. Oh, Jack, I... I'll call back for you later this afternoon. I'm sorry, Tara. I didn't mean for this to happen. You're just a big, blundering, stupid bully. Tara, please. And, and if you mess up the one thing that means happiness for me, I'll help him kill you. We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, missed reminded? Then mind you don't miss CBS Radio's Mr. Chameleon on the first of his new Friday night broadcasts tonight on most of these same CBS radio stations. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. Mr. Dillon? Uh, yes, Mr. Kells. Uh, won't you sit down, please? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Hope it won't take too long. Gretchen and I are in charge of the box store tonight, you know. <laughs> Wouldn't want to be too late. Well, it may take a few minutes, Mr. Kells. It's, uh, it's important. Oh? It's about Tara. And Jack Grace. You know about it, then? I've known about it ever since she came to town three weeks ago. They met. Heaven knows where or how, and she's been seen him most every day since. You know where she spends her time? At the Texas Trail. Yes, I know. Gretchen and I have tried every way we know, Marshal Dillon. We've both talked with Tara, but she's young and headstrong. I don't know what to do. I think she'd run away with him if we interfered again. Mr. Kells is Marshal. This is no affair of mine. But as someone who's fond of Tara and... Well, I... I, I, I wish you'd try talking with her again. Well, we'll do everything we can. I promise you that. Perhaps you... Well, perhaps Grace will get tired of her and leave Dodge. Uh, perhaps. Well, anyhow, you know I'll sure try. Yeah. Well, well, thank you very much for coming over here, Mr. Kelly. Sure, Marshal. You're going to be at the social tonight, aren't you? Oh, sure, sure. Chester and I'll be there. Chester'd be real upset to miss it. Good. We'll see you there. Okay, fine. <laughs> Mr. Dillon, uh, this is Miss Honeycutt. How do you? Uh, proud to know you, ma'am. Uh, I, I bought her supper box. Did you bid on any supper boxes, Mr. Dillon? Uh, no, Chester. I was late getting here. Oh, so. that's pity. Now, what do you do for supper? Oh, I'll make out all right. Well, there's really enough for the three of us, Marshal, if you'd care to join us. Well, thank you, Miss Honeycutt, but uh, I'm looking for Mr. and Ms. Kells. Oh, they're not here yet. The parson was asking for them a few minutes ago. Mr. Kells was to have auctioned off the suppers, but they didn't come, so we went ahead without them. Oh? 
You sure you won't join us, Marshal? Uh, no, thank you, ma'am. I'll just wait for the Kells. Perhaps I'll walk back toward their place and meet them on the way. Well, all right, Mr. Dillon. Uh, Miss Honeycutt and I'll be right over there if you need me. I don't think I will, Chester. You just go ahead and enjoy yourself. Real pleased to meet you. Nice to have met you, Miss Honeycutt. Mind that bench, Miss oh, Honeycutt. Yes, thank you. Oh, hello, Kitty. You're leaving the party before I get there? Uh, no, no. I was just walking back toward the Kells place. They're not at the social yet, and this might be a good chance to talk to them. Oh, all right, if I come with you. Well, sure. I had a talk with Mr. Kells this afternoon. Yeah? Yeah. He knows all about Tara and Grace. Has known for a long time. Well, what's he going to do about it, Matt? He doesn't know what to do. Neither do I, Kitty. Look, Kitty, you're a woman. You you know about these things. You don't tell a woman she shouldn't love some man, do you? No. No, you don't. Kells has tried hard. He's done everything he can. Well, he's a wealthy man. He could send her east for a, a few months on a visit. St. Louis, maybe. To forget Grace? Yeah. Would it do any good? No. Oh, there's the house. It's dark. Maybe we passed them. No, I don't think so. Here. Oh, thanks. Thanks, <laughs> Kitty? Yeah? Uh, maybe you better wait here, huh? Matt, what is it? The house shouldn't be dark. We didn't pass them. What are you going to do? I'm going inside. I'll come with you. All right, come on. The door's open. Oh, Matt. Matt, look. Stay here, Kitty. Shot, both of them. Oh. No wonder they were late for the auction. Kitty, go back to the church social. Find Chester. Have him meet me at the jail. Tell Doc to come over here. What are you going to do, Matt? I don't know. Look around, maybe. Why this? What for? Who knows why people kill, Kitty? Money, maybe. I don't know. But who'd do it, Matt? Who'd kill the Kells? Someone who hated them enough or thought they had something he wanted. Bad. Real bad. Grace. Will you please get Chester and Doc? Yeah. Yeah. Tara? Tara, are you all right? It's Matt Dillon, Tara. Are you hurt bad? Who did it, Tara? Do you know? Yes. Yes, I know. Well, who was it? Was it Grace? Oh, Matt. Matt. What happened, Tara? Tara. Mr. Kells was waiting for him when, when Jack came for me. Mr. Kells wanted to talk with Jack, he said. And, and, oh. Well, go on. I don't know. I don't know. I can't help if you don't tell me what happened. But when Jack came, there was an argument. Mr. Kells told Jack to go away, leave me alone. Told him not to come back. Jack laughed, called Mr. Kells a name, and Miss Kells slapped him. And Jack hit her. Mr. Kells tried to get his rifle in the corner, and Jack... 
Jack. Yeah? He shot them. He shot both of them. Then he turned and said it wouldn't have worked out for us. He was leaving. Just like that. He was leaving. You see, you'd be nothing but trouble, he said. I'm leaving, he said. Then he hit me. And... Doc will be here in a few minutes, Tara. He'll take care of you. You want me to go with you, Mr. Dillon? No, you stay here. Get me that Winchester, will you? Yes, sir. Here you are. Thank you. How do you figure to trail him at night, Mr. Dillon? I don't. I'm taking a guess, that's all. You know where he's going? Like I say, it's a guess. I won't be back to Texas. He's wanted there. Might be Abilene. Ben Thompson would cover for him there. You'll have an hour or more start on him, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I know, but I figure to take the back country and ride hard. Maybe I'll cut his sign by morning. You'll be riding three miles to his one. I'll take the buckskin. He can last. Yes, sir. Don't you want me to follow you? I should be back by tomorrow night. You stay here and help Kitty and Doc with everything. And take good care of the girl. She needs help. Yes, sir. Good luck, Mr. Dillon. Grace, you can't see me. Don't bother to try. Just drop your gun belt. Easy. And your rifle. Throw it down. Now keep your hands high, just like they are. You travel fast, Dylan. I didn't waste time getting to here. I know this country better than you, Grace. Roads aren't always straight. Even so, that buckskin of yours must be quite a piece of horse. He is. We'll be starting back right quick, but meanwhile, you just sit tall right where you are. Arms will get tired. Taking me back to jail and dodge. Well, what do you expect? You murdered two people just last night, tried a third. I just hit Tara down. I don't know as I tried to kill her. You must have known I'd come after you. I figured maybe you'd start tracking me toward Texas. <laughs> I didn't give you credit to think of my head and grabbling. <laughs> I guess the joke's on me. Yeah, I guess it is. You know, I don't understand what goes on inside you, Grace. There's no point in my getting riled. You got me cold, Deck. Someone told me earlier you were just a shell, that you were empty inside. But by heaven, you are. You're crazy, Grace. Just mean, pure crazy. It's you doing that talking, Marshal. Please yourself. In a way, it's all Tara's fault, I suppose. Well, it wouldn't have worked out anyway, like I told her. 
All right if I light up. Marshal? All right. But watch your moves. Uh, my makings are in my boots. Don't, Greg. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I I didn't know Kansas marshals were so fast. A Derringer up the sleeves, an old story, Grace. Yeah, but they sure are. Uh, I guess I won't go to trial after all. <laughs> no, maybe not. But you're going back to Dodge. Like they say on the posters. Dead or uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Dead or alive. Marshal Dillon, I want to thank you and Miss Kitty for everything you've done for me since Sure. Uh, you got everything in the stage, Tara? Yes, Miss Kitty. It's a long trip, Tara. You, uh, you sure you won't change your mind? I think I'll like it back east, and St. Louis won't be as big as all this. Uh, Marshal Dillon will be late into Haiti City if I don't get away now. Okay, driver. Well, uh, goodbye, Tara. Good luck. Goodbye. Well, Matt, she's gone. Yeah. I don't blame her for wanting to leave, Kitty. The West took nearly everything she loved. Her ma and pa and the Kells. And her true love? Look, Jack Grace? Jack Grace is no good, but Tara gave him a heart. And she never got it all back. Perhaps you're right, Kitty, but Tara's young. She'll mend. Will she, Matt? I hope so, Kitty. I truly do. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Special music for tonight's story was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Sammy Hill as Tara and John Daner as Jack Grace, with Ralph Moody, Joe Duval, and Vivi Janis, Harley Bear as Chester, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. Gunsmoke is heard by our troops overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke.